Welcome to another episode of Ask CoinSquare. I'm here with CEO and co-founder of Equibit Group, Chris Horlacher. And today we're gonna to be talking about scaling. 2017 saw tremendous stress on Bitcoin's network. We saw a key fork in Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash. Talk to me a little bit about why network scaling is important and how Bitcoin is scaling right now. So the economics of a blockchain are, are essentially people play, paying for space in a database. And so Bitcoin produces uh, an extra one megabyte of storage space uh, roughly every 10 minutes. And transactions are the demand and, and people are asking for, you know, please, Mr. Bitcoin miner, please add my transaction into that one megabyte block you're about to make. And uh, so that's the supply and demand dynamic of the system. Now, uh, when supply is, or when demand has uh, gobbled up all of the supply, of course, then the laws of economics say that prices must go up. And so we have seen a very drastic increase in the price of a Bitcoin transaction. And so in order to cope with this, uh, various solutions have been uh, proposed in order to increase the capacity of Bitcoin so that it can continue to be the dominant form of cryptocurrency today. Uh, and, and so one of these answers is to do on-chain scaling, uh, which is very easy to do and can be implemented without really any, uh, any extra coding. Uh, you just change the variable in Bitcoin that determines what the maximum block size is going to be. And then the other possible solution, uh, one put forth by a group of Bitcoin developers uh, uh, who under the name of Blockstream, is something called Lightning Network which is uh, in, uh, essentially a clearinghouse for cryptocurrency transactions. And so what it does is it allows frequent traders to set up uh, something called a payment channel uh, where they can exchange lots and, lots and lots and lots and lots of transactions without triggering something that has to go and get put into a block in Bitcoin. Uh, and whenever these two parties are ready to essentially close the channel and part ways, that what will happen is Lightning will net all of the transactions that occurred in the channel and generate a settlement transaction, which goes to the blockchain. So there's one transaction to set up the channel, one transaction to close the channel, and an infinite number of transactions happening in between those two events. How does scaling then tie into Equibit and what you're working on? Well, we need to be uh, cognizant of these limitations that Bitcoin uh, has run into and so we needed a plan in place to deal with this uh, ahead of time and uh, a lot of people out there well not everybody but certain camps in the uh, in the crypto community have kind of taken an either-or approach and and this is uh, in some cases uh, created some some pretty uh, uh, boisterous divisions in the community uh, we've tried to stay away from all of that because I think both scaling methods are valid. Uh, you know, there, are, there is a need for bigger blocks and there is also a need for off-chain scaling because when, when you, you think about what Bitcoin is, uh, you know, do you really need a permanent forever record of that coffee you purchased in the morning? Right. Uh, not really. Uh, does the store that sold you that coffee need a permanent record somewhere of that day's revenue? Probably. Uh, and, and that is how a lot of stores already work when they set up their merchant accounts. They get a once a day settlement from Moneris or Chase uh, or, or whoever their payment processor is. Uh, and Lightning uh, supplies that kind of a service. Uh, so what we would expect to see with Lightning is uh, people setting up essentially payment processing communities uh, where they will operate as a lightning hub and retailers and consumers connect to that hub and can exchange uh, value very rapidly, microtransactions, streaming money, uh, and all of these very interesting things now become possible if you're members of large uh, lightning hubs. Uh, on the flip side, you have other people who do not want to involve any kind of intermediary in their payments ever. Uh, and so they need the bigger blocks. Uh, and so there's no reason why both part camps can't be happy. And, and with Equibit, we are implementing on-chain and off-chain scaling. So in terms of on-chain scaling, we have a minimum block size of one megabyte. But we've also built in a scaling algorithm that is gonna look at the last three months of blocks 
uh, and take the median block that was produced, double that size and continuously use that calculation to recalculate what the maximum block size could be. Uh, and so this was an algorithm first put forth by uh, actually BitPay. Uh, and they had created it and, and sent in a pull request to Bitcoin Core. It was never merged. Uh, but nevertheless, it did get a lot of popularity in the cryptocurrency community because it just takes the on-chain scaling debate off the table right. uh, because the chain is going to automatically scale the block size to the demands of the network. Uh, we're also going to be implementing uh, or have implemented SegWit uh, fully. Uh, so if you're on Equibit, you must be using SegWit. Uh, so in terms of um, the transactions that do go on the, into the blocks, we're going to be very efficient from day one. Uh, so we we're looking at an effective, you know, two to four megabyte block already with Equibit. Uh, and then uh, and then you put uh, Lightning on top of that. And so we feel that, that uh, essentially a stock exchange in the world of Equibit is basically a Lightning Hub. Uh, because when you look at how exchanges operate, they connect to many different, they connect to their members and their brokers. And those brokers exchange the assets through the exchange, uh, which then triggers a once a day settlement. Uh, and you know, three days later, you actually get it. <laughs> but nevertheless, every day, you know, they open up at nine in the morning and the markets close at five. And if, uh, if the exchange is do, you doing that all on Equibit and a Lightning Hub, then all the brokers actually get their settlement in 10 minutes or less rather than three days. Uh, so it's, uh, it, 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 there's applications for Lightning Network that go beyond just um, easy micropayments and, and retail payments. All right, that's it for another episode of Ask CoinSquare. If you have a question, leave it down below using hashtag AskCoinSquare and you could be featured on the next episode.